Hey everyone and welcome back to the third person camera tutorials in Unity. This is going to be the last lesson of the series. And in this lesson we're going to be working on getting just nicer sets of animations going. Uh, we want to have a walk animation, a jog animation, and a run animation. And we want to be able to tween between those. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to build up, and this is just a single blend tree right now. And we're going to add some functionality to it to make it have several blend trees and blend between those. So in order to do that we need to set this locomotion blend tree and we need to start giving it new fields so we're going to give it several new fields that are all blend trees as well so the idea here is we're kind of just blending between blend trees if that makes sense so we're going to go ahead and remove all of our animations sounds kind of scary but it's not really too bad so remove all of these add a new blend tree add several of these actually and that should be good so we'll make this one our walking blend tree Oops. We're going to make this one the run blend tree, or jog actually. This one will be the run. And finally, we'll have sprint. Okay. What we want to do now is we want to give animations to all these trees, and we want to give them a parameter. So they all need to be, the, what's going to determine this is going to be speed and then direction is going to determine which one of these gets called. So we want to set thresholds for each one of these uh, at a separate speed. So walk is good at zero. Jog is going to be set to 0.6. Run is going to be set to 0.8. And sprint will be two. So this is how we're going to uh, transition between these. So let's go ahead and give that a preview. Oh, looks like we need to click on our character. Oh, there's no animations. That makes sense. Okay, so we need to add animations for all these real fast. So let's just add motion fields to everything. We're going to do four walk animations. For these, we're going to use... Actually, we're going to use several more than that. Uh, we want to go into our animations folder, go to the walk animations, and we're going to use all of these. So we want walk to be one of those. And we want to have a walk left medium, and a walk short medium to the left. And finally, walk left wide. We're going to do the same thing for the positive values, which are going to be our walk right short, walk right medium, and walk right wide. Homogenize the time scales and set the thresholds by hand. You want to set these to uh, various direction values. So we want to do negative one to one. So we're going to do negative one, negative, oh, that's the time scale. Let's homogenize those again. Uh, I want to use negative 0.6 for this one, negative 0.3, 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and one. So that's going to be our walk animation. And if you just have the character there, we can see what these look like. They get a nice preview there. There's our short walk, and you can move in any direction. So that's pretty good. Let's do the same thing for jog. I've only got three jog animations, so we're just going to make this one a little shorter. Now I just go to the jog folder, jog forge, we get, go in the middle, and then we have jog medium left and jog medium right. And the huge, we just got to set these guys to 0 0.3, 0 0.3. For run, uh, I prepared five animations for that. So we've got wide and medium, which is just the animations that we were using before. This idea of blending blend trees is actually uh, really useful. It's, it's a pretty cool thing that you can do. So let's go ahead and toss in our animations. We've got our running animations here. Run should go in the center. And then we've got run left. Oh, we've got one too many fields. We've got run right wide. And we have our wide value and our medium value. So we've got wide left 
and we've got medium center. Where is medium? There we go. Medium right, medium left. Homogenize the time scale and go ahead and set the values. We're just going to set these to negative 0 0.5, 0 0.3, oops, negative 0.3, 0, 0, 0.3, 0 0.6. So the same thing as they were before. Oh, this should be 0.5, sorry. And then we've got one more called sprint. This is going to have three fields. And we want to toss our sprint animations in there. We have sprint forward, turn medium right, and sprint forward, medium left. I've got more animations. I just haven't. I just haven't really set them up yet. And there's a process you have to go through for setting up animations. Uh, there's a lot of information on the docs about it, but it does take some time. So for now, we're just using this. So we're gonna use negative one, zero, and one. Cool. So we've got a much more complex uh, tree now. So if we've got direction, we can set, and that'll determine what direction we move. And we also have speed, which will determine whether we walk, whether we run, jog or sprint, full tilt sprint there. So that's pretty cool. It's going to give us much more realistic moving movement. And that's it. So let's test it out. So now, now we're in the run mode. And if we let off the stick a little bit, we start jogging, and if we let off even more, we begin to walk, and finally we stop. So that's pretty nice. You may be wondering how we're going to get into the sprint mode, and that's going to require a little bit of coding. So we're going to go ahead and add some code to the character logic script, but right after, we add some jump animations. So we want to be able to get over these blocks here, and in order to do that, we need to add some jump animation. I've got two jump animations that I've prepared. We've got jump section here and we can toss in locomotion idle jump and we have we also have locomotion uh, just regular locomotion jumps this is this is running while locomoting and we can go ahead and set values for these guys create transition and create transition okay cool the thing that you may be wondering right now is like, how do we know when we need to jump? And to do that, we're going to use a Boolean. So we're going to make a new Boolean input. We're just going to call this jump. So if that's true, our character will jump. We want to float as well. It's going to say jump curve. This is going to be how high he jumps. We want one more for the capsule collider. So we want to have the capsule collider uh, move with the character and, and move where his feet are. So that's good enough there. We want to set conditions for when we want to jump. So that's pretty simple. You just want to say, if we're going to jump, then jump. <laughs> and here, same thing. If you're going to jump, jump. And we're going to also set an exit condition of exit time. So just the default condition for leaving. So that's our completed uh, mechanism animation tree. This is as far as we're going to go with this. And now we just need to add some code to support these new values. You'll notice too on these uh, animations, I've set up several curves. So there's this jump animation here, and there's a jump curve, which goes from 0 to 1, and it kind of has this sort of jumpish type movement to it. This is just a really quick curve I made to control the height of the character when he's jumping. And the capsule collider just basically shrinks the capsule collider during the height of that jump so that he can jump over things. Okay, cool. So that, that's it there. Let's go ahead and start editing our character script. For the script, we're going to add in a couple things first. Uh, we're going to have the A button control our jumping and the B button control our sprinting. So, uh, if you look at this right here, it's just if the A button occurs, set the bull to jump, otherwise set it to false. If you hold B, you'll be sprinting, and we're just going to lerp between this and a sprint speed, uh, which we can set the sprint speed constant pretty quickly. I'm just going to copy it out of another file. Uh, I've got sprint speed, here we go. So 
We're just going to set sprint speed to 2. And that'll just be a private variable that we have. Just a constant. And basically, we're just going to, as soon as we let off a of sprint, we're just going to make our speed go back to normal. And we actually don't need this because it's going to be set anyways. We're just going to set the field of view back to normal. So this is going to kind of move the field of view in and out. So we're going to have uh, a wider field of view while we're sprinting, which is just kind of something that a lot of games do is they just widen the field of view so you can see more when you're running faster. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it's just something I think is a nice touch. And let's make sure that we have these variables set up in Unity. Let's go to our input manager. Product settings, input. And we want to make sure that we have our sprint button and our jump button set up. So we're going to set those up real fast. Let's add a new entry to our list here. And we're going to set that list to 20. And at the bottom, we're going to have a new variable. It's called a sprint. And we're going to set it to joystick button 3, which if you look at the Xbox diagram, is the uh, X button. Oh, I actually want to set it to 2. 2 is the X button. 3 is Y. So we'll use, we'll use 2 for this. And you can leave all these uh, just as normal. And for our jump button, we want to have that set to joystick button 0, which as you can see corresponds to the A button. A button usually is jump. So jump, joystick button 3. We want to actually set that to joystick button 0. OK, cool. So those, those variables correspond in our script uh, right here. We've got sprint and jump. So hopefully this will work. Let's see. So that looks like the field of view is being set, but our speed is being overwritten later. So we need to change that. And it looks like we can jump. So that's pretty cool. So we've got our idle jump. We have normal jump here. And it doesn't look like the idle jump is actually working. That's this one here. So jump is true. That should probably be jumping. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not. Okay, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a second. So let's go back to the script. We need to have our speed. Uh, if we're if we're sprinting, we don't want to we don't want to set the speed here. So we can just add a quick condition. If not holding that button, then we can set the, sp the speed as normal. Otherwise, we've already set it, and we don't need to set it. So it's just a quick way of doing that. Let's see if that made it better. And we can look in our locomotion tree and see those new sprint variables that we made and see if we're actually accessing those. So we're still just running, which is not good. Okay, so to get the sprinting working, all, all you have to do is you just need to go into your script, set a new damp time, I set it to 3, and then actually move this input sprint right below your stick to world space. And what was happening was, this was already setting speed, by the time we got here it was already being set. So we want to pass in like a secondary variable into this guy, and then decide whether we want to use the normal speed value uh, that just comes out of this method, or if we want to use our sprint speed, which is 2. And we're just going to change the field of view over time. So that should do the trick now. Let's go ahead and run it. Hold X, and our character sprints, and the field of view changes. Let go. All is good. So we have a nice sprinting animation here. Now uh, we want to figure out what's wrong with the jump. So we've got a normal jump here, but we can't get our still jump to work. So for some reason, that transition isn't happening. So let's look into that. The reason that was happening is I accidentally drew this uh, line from locomotion. So as you can see there, it's not connected to idle. So that's definitely a bug. So even though this isn't coding, you can still have uh, bugs in these state, in state trees. So let's just set this jump to true and make sure that that works now. So we should be able to jump from idle state. OK, cool. So now we can jump while we're running, and we can jump while we're standing. Now the next step is to actually get our character to uh, move up and down by some degree. 
And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use our script. So let's set a uh, let's set up a new method in here, and we want to do that so that when we jump, we use the animation curve that's stored in this animation, because in each one of these, there's a curve for how high he needs to jump.